do one thing that she's done, and the one thing she talks about, digital domain, blew up in smoke. So let's have a mayor that's accountable, a mayor who gets things done. Since I've become a city commissioner, I've accomplished a lot. And, and as a lot of you know, I, I did a lot of my work um, disagreeing with a very strong woman in Lois Frankel. And anyone who can survive that, I'd say, is, uh, is pretty mighty. Not only did I survive it, I ended up working to a place where I could actually get along with her and, and, and genuinely like her. I wish we could have done that for the, the full eight years that she was the mayor, but that wasn't possible. Um, I have a list of accomplishments, not just rhetoric, Mayor. Um, the, the hotel at the convention center had always been, before you even lived in the city of West Palm, it had always been known that it would be on the tax rolls and the county would pay, make a pilot payment. We had to go through lots of iterations with different developers about who was gonna build the hotel and how it was gonna get done, but it was always going to be a contributor to the city of West Palm Beach, not just in the hotel rooms, but generating revenue. I have, I brought forward, in fact, and I, and I at the State of the City this year, uh, last month, the mayor highlighted one of my, one of the, the best things that I've done for the city, and that's creating something that has never existed here, and it's the Chronic Nuisance Abatement Ordinance and along with it, the landlord training program. I learned about it in Milwaukee. I worked for four years to get Lois Frankel to say yes to it. Eventually we did. Now, I, to her credit, she did hire somebody to start the work to do it, but the backbone and the, and the architect of that program has been me. So that's an accomplishment. I took a golf course. Our golf course in the South End in 2002 was running into the ditch pulled it out of the ditch, and now the mayor has put it back in the ditch. She tore down the clubhouse with no plan to replace it, and rounds her down, and the people in the city are heartbroken. I'm heartbroken. So I could give lists of my accomplishments. I've got a lot of them here, but she's gonna tell me to be quiet. That's right. Yes. You have closing remarks. Anybody else? Let's close. Yeah, you want to talk to the other? No, no, we will. Okay, are we done? Yeah, we're ready. Go ahead. Two minutes. Thanks, Chuck. See, we're helpers. We're helpers. We we get along. I. This is how I want to end. I I love this city with everything in me. I am not a perfect person, but I bring my perfect intentions to the work that I do all the time. And I'm asking for your support. Uh, Lands, the president, has supported me in every election since 2002, and I would be honored to have it again March 10th. I would love it if you, were, you would cast your vote, vote, ballot vote, for Kimberly Mitchell. Well, thank you, everyone. Thank you for being here tonight, and thank you for uh, patiently listening to us. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, I just want to tell you about the next three days and some of the great things that are happening in our city. Our city is on the right track. We're going in the right direction. On Saturday, the mall is celebrating its first anniversary. It's Valentine's Day. I want to wish you all a happy Valentine's Day. It also happens to be my birthday. So we're having a birthday party at the mall. At 1 o'clock, there'll be cupcakes, so I hope you'll join us there. Also on Saturday, we're doing the ribbon cutting at the EOC um, uh, Fire Station 5, your fire station. Please come out at 11 o'clock. And on Friday night, we are having a statewide baseball dinner here, right in our city. The commissioner of baseball is going to be in our city. We are having 500 people join us. There will be a little league game that takes place on the waterfront. I hope you'll come and watch it. It's going to be a huge event and it's because baseball is coming to West Palm Beach. We have done so much in the last four years. Please vote for me on March 10th, and let's keep the momentum moving forward. Thank you very much.
like to introduce it to Paul after his leave. Um, and everybody's thanked you for holding this forum. I think it's great. I think it's wonderful that you know people come out and are interested in the issues. Um, it's your city. Um, I, as Aviva said, did not draw an opponent, so I am your commissioner-elect for District 3. For those of you on the east side of 95, I am your commissioner. And, um, you know, I had an opportunity to listen to all of the questions, so I just want to leave my card. I would love to talk to each and every one of you who have raised the questions and the issues that, that you have. So, again, thank you. My name is Paula Ryan. And I am thrilled at the opportunity of becoming your commissioner. I've lived in Palm Beach County for 23 years. I've been in the city for 13 years. I came here by way of Washington, D.C. via Boston. And I've been here half my career here, half my career up north. I come from a family of service. I'm one of seven children. My father spent his career in the military. I have a sister who was a retired colonel in the Navy. She was a trauma nurse. Her last tour of duty was Afghanistan. I have a brother that currently still serves in the military and is a um, Black Hawk pilot. Five tours in Afghanistan. A brother serving in Germany. A brother who served in Vietnam. And all of my other siblings also joined the military. Didn't stay as long as the rest. And the question is why did not? Everybody else in my family did. Um, that wasn't the road that I wanted to take, but the values that came with that upbringing were very, were very much instilled in me. I put myself through college. I have a degree in economics and finance from the University of Maryland. And I've spent the last 20 years working in, as an investment banker, real estate developer of affordable housing. I have built communities that are within communities. I provide daycare, healthcare. I work with the Federal Low Income Housing Tax Credit, Section 42 of the IRS Code. So I come, back, I come from a very strong financial background, 20 years in real estate, land use, um, zoning. I understand what the issues are that we are facing. I bring the skill sets that will help guide the city as a commissioner, my job is policy and the budget. We absolutely can talk about services. We need to look at our budget. We need to know that what we're cutting is not cutting the services that we need. We need to be supportive of the development in a way that it doesn't cause damage or impact negatively in the community. I do want to just share with you that the county and the city have started a task force dealing with the coastal line from Suma Road South all the way to fp &L. I currently am the president of the El Cid Neighborhood Association, so I have worked with communities one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I have worked to bring about the uh, Dixie Highway study implementation plan that's going from Okeechobee to uh, just south of Belvedere Road. As a private citizen, we raised the funds, we brought together Oh, I get 30 seconds. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I just want to just give you a little personal information. I'm married to a wonderful guy named Cliff Hertz who's been in this community for 40 years. Between us, we have four children, two grandchildren, and I'm very much looking forward to working with all of you and moving the city forward. So thank you to, for having us. Thank you for uh, hosting this, and thank you, Aviva, for, for putting this together. It always always looks easier than it really is. <coughs> um, my name is Catherine Waldron, and I'm running for uh, District 2. It's an open seat. Commissioner Robinson is retiring. So for those of you who aren't, who aren't familiar with where that district is, of course, it's a citywide race. Um, district 2 is east, uh, sorry, west of 95, between 45th Street and Okeechobee along Spencer Drive and Village Boulevard. Um, 
This is my first time running, so I'm going to, for my introduction, talk a little bit about my, my background to give you a little bit more information. I was born and raised in Washington, D.C. I got my BA from the University of Virginia and my MBA from Palm Beach Atlanta. <coughs> Thirteen years ago, I moved down to, uh, to this area, and like most of you, fell in love with this area. I think it's a great area with a great quality of life. I'm a retired sprint executive. I, ran a, uh, I was vice president uh, for sales, for a sales group. So I, ran, I had a na nationwide sales force. Uh, we uh, built our group to, uh, to an annual revenue stream of several hundred million dollars. And I managed a multi-million dollar complex budget. A couple of years ago, I co-founded a software compliance training company. Uh, which does uh, online training for uh, various industries. <coughs> and I'm proud to say we have three patents pending. I've always had a passion for community service, and so when I moved down here, this was no different. I got very involved in various activities. Among them, I uh, was on the board of the Boys and Girls Club in Northwood. I started a PAC, a, a, a nonpartisan PAC, to uh, work with, uh, to get residents more engaged in the uh, political process. And I uh, was president of my condo board for several years. And then I had the honor of being appointed by Mayor Frankel to uh, lead the volunteer efforts for Coleman Park, the revitalization project that took place several years ago. I was also appointed by the county commissioners to the Citizens Committee on Airport Noise. So I've been very involved in this community. I'm very committed to this community. I want to bring my commitment to this community, my passion for community service, and my business background from a, at the corporate level and the small business level to the dais to help promote our economic prosperity and ensure our quality of life. So now I want to close with um, by mentioning three people who are very close to me, my close, closest uh, to my heart. My children, they're young adults. My oldest daughter is Mary Kate, and she lives in Missouri. She's a chemical engineer with Unilever. My oldest son is Joseph, and uh, he's studying to be a CPA in Washington, D.C. And my youngest son, uh, Luke, is also in D.C. He is a veterinary technician. Mm -hmm. So they're great kids, I'm very lucky, and um, we're hoping someday soon to be a grandmother. <laughs> so uh, I'll close with that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Len Fincy and I'm running for commissioner in District 4. I want to thank you so much for coming here tonight and giving me the opportunity to sit and share some information with you about myself. My wife Rita and I moved to Riverwalk almost 18 years ago when I retired after 39 years as a teacher, principal, and dean in Yonkers, New York. In December, we celebrated our 50th anniversary. As a teacher, I helped organize and became president of the Yonkers Federation of Teachers and vice president of the New York State Federation of Teachers. I negotiated contracts and became very familiar with municipal budgeting. As a principal, I was usually assigned to dysfunctional secondary schools with the task of turning them around. My interpersonal skills combined with a degree in psychology helped me to achieve success in those endeavors. In my spare time, I volunteered as a scout leader for 25 years and as an EMT instructor and paramedic for 28 years. I also was the manager of a multi-million dollar Midtown Manhattan travel agency. Upon moving here, I quickly became concerned with the issue of double taxation, wherein we in the gated communities pay the same taxes as others but do not get the same services. I helped organize City Watch and was its president for the past seven or so years proud to say that I received the unanimous endorsement of City Watch. As president of City Watch, I led the fight that stopped encroachment on our water supply. I also got the city to construct fire stations 7 and 8 in District 4. My opponent was not yet on the scene. Several years ago, I asked the city to pay for our street lamps like they do everywhere else in the city. The city attorney said it wasn't legal. I produced documents from the Attorney General saying it was a matter of public safety, and the commissioners agreed to phase in the coverage of those costs. This has saved this community and every other gated community thousands of dollars every year. My opponent 
was not on the scene then. I have analyzed every city budget line by line since 2006 and identified millions of dollars in expenditure savings and untapped revenues that help to keep your taxes from escalating. I started the Community Emergency Response Team program in West Palm Beach and am its senior instructor and chief of Riverwalk CERT. I must say I'm sad to say that this community does not have an emergency response team. But if you're interested, I'd be happy to set, help you set it up, train, and equip your volunteers. My opponent has been on the commission for four years, two of them in the largely ceremonial post of president. But he was not on the scene for us before that. I have devoted the last 16 years voluntarily helping you. Granted, I did not have the vote on the dais, but I got the job done for us many times. With your support, I will continue working for you and will open up a window of regular dialogue that does not currently exist. I'm Len Fincy, your advocate in City Hall, and I hope you will support me to continue to be your voice. Thank you. All right, good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. All right, there we go. My name is Corey Nearing. I'm running for West Palm Beach City Commission. It's District 2. Uh, as Catherine stated, it is an open seat. Uh, a little bit about myself. I'm a native son of West Palm Beach, uh, born and raised here. As a matter of fact, the only time that I've been away <coughs> is to attend the University of Florida. Uh, I have an undergrad degree in sociology and I have a master's degree in organizational management and leadership. Um, my beautiful wife, who is here, uh, and I have two children. We have a son and a daughter. My daughter is in her first year of college here locally, uh, and my son attends public middle school, not far from here, uh, Bach School of the Arts. He's a vocal major, and I can tell you uh, he didn't get it from me or my wife. Uh, most of my career has been in the public sector, and for the last 16 years, I've worked for Planned Parenthood of South Florida as their vice president of education. Uh, part of my role there has been managing a multi-year, I'm sorry, a multi-million dollar uh, budget. I sit on a variety of boards and committees uh, throughout Palm Beach County, um, but what I'm most proud of uh, is my work in mentoring, uh, mentoring young people right here in this community, West Palm Beach. And let me tell you why that's important. Uh, one of the ways that we make a great city is we help young people make good decisions. Uh, it has a cascading effect on crime, high school dropouts, uh, and, and there's plenty of opportunity for that, and so I'm very proud of that work. So why am I running for West Palm Beach City Commission? I'm running because I believe we have a great city. Uh, our city is great, but we have the opportunity to be an exceptional city. Uh, I'm running because I understand that attracting businesses and companies to our city is important, but equally as important is supporting our local businesses and supporting small businesses. When my wife and I started our small business uh, some five years ago, we were like many startups, we were uh, in the red, and there were times that we thought about closing. And we stayed the course, we stuck to our business plan and our marketing plan, and some five years later, we're in the black, and we both can smile about that. Um, I'm also running because I understand that it's important that you have a city commissioner that takes the approach of listening before acting. You know, God blessed me with two ears and one mouth. And I'm going to use that on the dais. And finally, certainly not least, uh, I'm running because, as I shared earlier, I was born in the city and I'm going to retire here. So every decision that I make, I'm going to be taking that into account. It's not about what currently is happening, happening, but what are the cascading effects of some of these projects that we're taking on. It matters to me, it matters to my family, it matters to my kids. Again, Corey Neary, I'd love your support on March 10th, West Palm Beach City Commission. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, my name is Keith James, and I am the current commissioner in District 4. Uh, first of all, thanks to Aviva and to all of those who assisted with putting on uh, this event. And thanks to all of you for coming. Uh, it's very important to have an informed electorate. The fact that you're spending time out of your busy schedules this evening to hear what we have to say on the issues uh, shows that you're very involved and very engaged. And, certainly appreciate that. 
I have been in office uh, for four years, and I have uh, had the privilege, I'm the only commissioner, to serve as president of the commission for two consecutive terms, and unlike what my uh, opponent said, it is more than just a largely ceremonial position. There's a, a lot of additional responsibility that comes with that, uh, and it is a uh, pledge of honor because the peers, my fellow members of the dais, are the ones who selected me for that position. A little bit of personal information, I've been a resident of Florida for 27 years. I've uh, raised two, both of my children were born here in St. Mary's Hospital, uh, raised two children. Um, I myself am a, a practicing corporate attorney at my own law firm, I've had my own law firm for the last nine years, and a graduate of Harvard College and Harvard Law School. I'm not gonna take you back 30 years to uh, what organizations I belong to. I'd like for you to focus, quite frankly, on what I've done over the, judge me on what I've done over the last four years uh, since I have been a commissioner. Uh, I have a proven track record of effective leadership uh, with integrity and transparency. Uh, during my time on the commission, I have proven to be an independent, balanced voice. Uh, I am not and will not be beholden to any particular developer, any particular lobbyist, and quite frankly, any particular colleague on the day as who might happen to be mayor. Um, I've delivered results in the four years that I've been in office. As you recall, the last four years have been some tough economic times in our city. And as the mayor pointed out earlier, we have passed four budgets without increasing the millage rate. Uh, that was not easy. There were difficult decisions that have to be made and you could read 600 pages of a budget all night long, but it's when you are administering policy and have to make some of the tough choices. That's what leadership, that's what service is all about. A Couple of my areas of focus, and we'll get into this later. Public safety is number one. Everyone deserves to live in a safe, clean neighborhood. And that has been my focus and will continue to be my focus. Also identifying the long-term water supply. Uh, but we'll get into all these later. Uh, I would appreciate your vote and support on March 10th. I am Keith James and I am the existing city commissioner I have been for four years. Thank you. Sure, there have been some. I can't remember all of the residential projects that have come before us, but not everyone has been approved. Um, so let, me, let me ask it this way, because I, I was trying to find this out before. Many elected officials over the last several years uh, have passed up many opportunities to create open spaces, including this golf course, including the golf course that used to be where Target is, and including all the land that's uh, where Hank Aaron Stadium used to be. Uh, would you support putting money in the budget for buying and preserving open space in the city? Absolutely, I think we already have money in the budget. We have several acres of park throughout our city. And in fact, one of the things that I insisted upon with this whole baseball deal, uh, what the mayor didn't mention, is that part of that is giving uh, is going to be a significant park. In fact, as we are speaking, there is community planning going on uh, near 45th Street, uh, where we are starting to uh, engage the community and telling us what they want in that park. Uh, there is no other park for the residents, my district, uh, west of 95, and so that was very important. But yes, park and open spaces are very important. I think we have a, a, a significant inventory of those, and we want more. Anyway, so as part of that deal, we insisted that, that and even when the uh, private developer was before us before, we insisted that there would be a significant regional park there, and baseball has agreed to do that, and we as the city will have uh, a hand in designing the features of that park. So. Thank you. The other one's better. Anybody else? Go ahead. 
Oh, you won. I think your uh, question has to do with sort of an overall quality of life, and one of the reasons we're here is because we like it. We have the benefits of a big city and the benefits of a small city. So, of course, everybody else wants to come down here too, and there's land that can be developed on. So it's a constant tension between you have to have growth, but it has to be responsible growth. Um, but we don't want to obviously overdevelop develop because then the quality of life goes away. And there's a lot of infrastructure issues that go with that. When I've been out talking to people over the last few months, uh, there are a lot of areas that seem to have a lack of uh, good access to parkland. And I think that there's a lot of areas in the city where you don't need to have a massive multiple acre park. You can have small parks tucked into neighborhoods that have a really good, strong impact on a neighborhood's ability to allow people to, you know, kids to go out and play safely. And I think we need to look at where those pockets are and be. Um, and I think it's important that we find areas in every district, because I know in my district, uh, some of the gated communities have parkland, but the other areas don't. So we need to go out and find some of those areas and build more parks, because that's very important to, as a mother of three children, you know, you want your kids to have a place go outside and not be sitting inside all day. So I hope that answers your question. Green space is important. We all know that. Nobody's going to challenge that. Um, I wasn't here, but I was told 20 years ago the city floated a bond to uh, purchase and uh, develop more parks. And about 10 years ago, we floated a, another bond, it's about $20 million to buy and rehabilitate parks and make them available. And part of that bond issue was to build a park in what is called the Western communities. You folks are considered to be part of the Western communities, at least 